Back in the 1970s, the wire wrap technique was the order of the day for making prototypes. Point-to-point -point wiring and wire wrapping were laborious and time-consuming. Assembling large circuits this way was an enormous task, and very error-prone. Fast forward to the present. We now use simulation tools to create virtual prototypes of our designs. A schematic-based system can be used to wire up the simulation models coming from different field solvers. This works well for relatively simple designs, but for more complex designs, it too can be tedious and error-prone. To illustrate, suppose you add multiple transmission lines on a schematic to connect various components in a system. Each of the rectangular blocks here is a 3D model computed by electromagnetic simulation. If you miss even one connection, the simulation results will be wrong. What if you could instead pick and place the actual 3D model without the need to create a schematic? This can be much easier than schematic-based entry. Pin connections are automatically established once you place the 3D model on a layout. You can maneuver the 3D model as you wish before connecting it with the PCB. ANSYS HFSS 3D Layout, combined with ANSYS HFSS, offers this layout-driven assembly approach for connecting PCBs, ICs, and discrete components. In part one of this movie series, you'll learn how to place a USB connector on a printed circuit board. In its physical form, this board is used to develop Internet of Things or IoT applications. Here's the virtual prototype of the same PCB and HFSS 3D layout. We can place the connector on either of these two component footprints, J3B2 and J2B3. We'll place it on J3B2. Here's a 3D model of the micro USB connector in ANSYS HFSS. The model is excited by four lumped ports. Two of the ports interface with the printed circuit board, and the other two mate with an external connector. Boundary conditions are being shown here. There are four PEC boundaries and a radiation boundary. This connector model is simulated with a full-wave 3D electromagnetic analysis in ANSYS HFSS. The printed circuit board is quite complex and will be simulated in 2.5D with ANSYS SI Wave. A circuit level analysis will then be used to combine the two simulation results. You'll see that the connector loss is only 0.63 dB, but when we include the effects of the channel on the board, the overall losses will be 22 dB. In 3D layout, ensure the PCB layer where you want to place the connector is active. In this case, it's set to the top layer. To avoid confusion, you can make this layer be the only one visible. In the project tree, copy the HFSS design of the micro USB connector and paste it into the HFSS 3D layout design of the PCB. The connector first appears at some arbitrary location in free space. Click Layers and enable Symbols. This will help you see port instances on the connector. Select the radiation surface of the connector and hide it as shown. You can use the Pan option to drag the geometry. Now zoom into the connector. Since the connector is oriented vertically, we need to rotate and maneuver it to position it correctly. To do this, select the Footprint tab in the Properties window, and then Enable 3D Placement. This causes a coordinate system local to the connector to appear. We'll use the electrical snap method to create connections between the connector pins and the pads on the board. We'll set the origin of the connector coordinate system to one of the pins mating to the board. This will give us a good snap handle. If we mouse over the local coordinate system, we can grab the connector and easily move it around. Right now we are moving it in the XY plane. Press Z. The grid plane changes in the background to the XZ plane. When we move the mouse with the Z key held, it locks the direction of the movement to be along the Z axis. We can move the mouse anywhere and the connector tracks only along Z in that plane. In this case, we directly snap to the exact pin that we want, as shown by the lightning bolt snap handle. We can snap across any other configured snap handle too, but it's just easier to use only the electrical snap. The lightning bolt is the pin. During this process, if you accidentally snap the connector to the wrong pin or to a wrong point on the USB connector, you can release the Z key and go back to moving in the XY plane to find the right pin. Now let's rotate it into the correct plane. Select the Y axis to activate it. Right click in the layout editor and go to 3D Components and 90 degrees. Grab the circular manipulator for rotation and drag minus 90 degrees about the activated Y axis as shown. Click X axis and rotate by 90 degrees. Zoom out now. 
Use the Pan and Select Element options and move the connector. Press Ctrl plus Alt and rotate the geometry as desired. Use the Pan and Select Element options and move the connector into the vicinity of the footprint J3B2. Hold down Ctrl, Alt, and Shift and drag the mouse to zoom in. Move the connector slowly closer to the footprint. We'll connect this pin with this footprint. Select the connector. Zoom in closer. Grab the connector and hold down the Z key. As you move closer to the footprint, the lightning bolt symbol will appear to indicate an electrical snap as possible. Here I'm deliberately raising the connector to show you the exact pin J3B2 where the lightning bolt appears. This helps us check that the port is going to mate with the correct pin. Finally, when the connector snaps onto the footprint, the pin connectivity window automatically appears. You can confirm the accuracy of the connection between the connected port instance and its corresponding pin. Press OK to create layout ports and electrical connections for the linear network analysis. Zoom out now. The pin connectivity window will appear when contact is established, but only if that behavior is activated in the options window as shown. This concludes part one of this video series. In part two, you'll see how to simulate this design and perform post-processing.